I just sort of tapped into my inner beast, my inner monster. And it's really fun, you know, when you're playing a, just a horrible character, just like a character with no redeemable qualities, just vicious. Um, and I think all of us have a, a little Bowser inside somewhere, buried deep, hopefully. And uh, it was a cool thing to explore. I don't get to play a lot of super evil characters. The thing about Bowser is he's scary and he's strong and he's a monster, but what's funny about Bowser is that he's sensitive and insecure. And that's a fun thing to play because they don't really go together. Why is Bowser so obsessed with Princess Peach? Why is anyone obsessed with anything? I mean, obviously, he's taken by her beauty, her tenderness. But also, she's a badass. She can really hold her own in a fight. And Bowser respects that. Princess Peach rules with compassion. Everyone in the Mushroom Kingdom has value in the eyes of Princess Peach. Bowser rules with an iron fist, with rage. He controls his population of Koopas with fear and intimidation. Bowser also enjoys heavy metal music, and he rules with the power of rock, and he shall destroy all in his path. How would I describe the Super Mario Brothers movie? Exciting, hilarious, romantic, thrilling, enchanting, psychedelic. What do you call that when you remember something? Something's, something's you remember fondly? It takes you back to a time that you loved in your childhood? Nostalgic. Dude. Um, rad. Awesome. I had more words. I don't know what the secret ingredient over there is, but the brain trust in charge of those projects uh, continues to amaze, and I'm super psyched to be part of an Illumination masterpiece. Uh, I was thrilled that I was just getting a chance to be in this thing, let's be honest. Uh, you know, Luigi's an iconic character. I love the Super Mario Brothers, and then, and then I was... You know, I, I was laughing out loud reading the script. I'm a child of the 80s, so uh, this, was a, this was a big shift in, uh, in our childhood landscape. When, uh, when, the, when you got the Nintendo, at least the one I got, it came with Super Mario Brothers. So it, it was the game that we all played and uh, we all loved and, and still love. It means a lot to just to get to be a part of this, and uh, I know how much it means to the fans of, of the characters. It's just it's an honor to, uh, you know, to, to get to be asked to do this. Luigi is the Luigi that we all know and love. Uh, maybe not the bravest of the two Mario brothers, but uh, certainly he has a big heart and he's loyal and uh, he, he's he's good at getting himself into some. Uh, some tight spots, but um, uh, he is just diehard loyal brother to his uh, to his brother Mario. I, he's just a big sweetheart, and uh, you know it's it's nice to play a, a a a good guy sometimes. You know, bad guys are fun to play too, but uh, Luigi's got a big old heart, and I like that. You're gonna to get to see it all. You're gonna to get to see the Mushroom Kingdom. You're gonna to get to see the Rainbow Road. Um, uh, but for me, you're gonna to get to see Brooklyn. And I think, uh, you know, that is a, uh, the most exciting set piece of all, because you never know what's gonna happen in Brooklyn. This game is something that, that people have, yeah, that definitely people have played all over the world. And I think it's just being part of this legacy is really, really, really an honor which is not, you know, sometimes you get excited that you get a role because of what it has in it. And sometimes you get that extra little boost that you get to be honored to be part of something that was bigger than you. This is a game that has, has gone past cultures and, 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 
everybody in the world can share in it. It's been really a wonderful thing to be part of this, this, this world. But there's enthusiasm that's infectious about him, and I, I saw it on the page, and I definitely also wanted to make sure I was imbuing the performance with that. And so I, I, I think that everything to his voice, to his attitude. So, th so Toad's big thing is that he's such a proud member of the Mushroom Kingdom, it's really important to him that people understand what a wonderful and special place it is. So when he encounters Mario, it, there's this golden opportunity for him to show him his world and what his world is all about. And I think that that kind of um, pride that he has also is commingled with this loyalty that he has for Princess Peach. And that I think he's very, he's very proud. He has a lot of pride in the place that he's from and would do anything at all to protect it. And it doesn't matter how his size or his stature, he has, he's fierce and he's brave. And I think that's, that's a really great quality that he has about him. Working with, um, with uh, Michael Jelinek and Aaron Horvath was really, really a lot of fun. These guys gave me a certain degree of freedom. And like I said before, it was really nice to be able to explore together to find the voice for Toad and to find the attitude for Toad. And because of what we did create, uh, or co-create, I got to have a lot of fun in the booth. And they were always very open to letting me improvise. And sometimes we knew we wouldn't be using it, but whatever I would improvise would allow me to stay in character. And, and they weren't, you know, they always were open to that. And that kind of open dialogue and that kind of open spirit in uh, a creative workspace is essential. The movie has to be seen on a big screen because of the the sheer scope of it. Every time we go to a new land or a new kingdom inside of the, the Mario world, it, you, you, you want to see this on a large scale. I want to see Cranky Kong and Donkey Kong's world on a huge scale. I, uh, I want to see the Mushroom Kingdom on a huge scale. I want to see Bowser's lair, his you know, floating fire lava lair on a huge screen. There's just these great perspectives and there's enormous, enormous things that you want to see in scale to these tiny, small things. It's, it's an absolute feast for the eyes to watch this thing. There's a lot of things to take away, but one of the big things is Mario's spirit. I think that this spirit, uh, this sense of loyalty and never say die um, is, the thing, is one of the great themes in the piece. And I think that's good for kids to learn that sense of like, never give up, never give up. Keep fighting for what you want. Keep no matter what Mario does, he keeps his eye on the prize and he keeps looking for his brother. And it's really, it's, it's really actually inspiring. Very inspiring, heartwarming, and I hope people can take from that that if there's something that you want bad enough, you really can achieve it. If you think you can do it, you can do it the way that Mario decides he's going to do it. It's about perseverance and hard work. So that's one of, I think, many themes in the film, but that's one that really resonates with me. How many opportunities do you ever get in your lifetime to take your child to a movie when the lead character has nostalgia for both you and your child for having a profound impact on their childhood, right? Like, I'm gonna take my 10-year-old to see this movie and uh, he'll remember the first time he played Mario when he was nine and I'll remember the first time I played Mario when I was nine. And in a way, we'll both be that, the same kids enjoying that. Super Mario Brothers is the best-selling video game around the world, and I was one of the hundreds of millions of people who have played the game. Uh, I was nine years old in 1988-89. Uh, we got the Nintendo Entertainment System at our house. Uh, also, I had played uh, Mario Brothers, the arcade game. There was a, a dry cleaner by my house that had the game, and I was ab absolutely obsessed. If I found a quarter, if I could scratch together two dimes and a nickel, I was right off to uh, play to play Mario and it was magic for me it's it, that time in my childhood that well everyone's got that nostalgic uh, moment in their childhood that they hold on to and you know I think Mario is that nostalgic moment for a lot of people across many generations because there have been so many iterations of the game Mario is a wide-eyed dreamer who's devoted to his brother and his family and uh, I really like that. 
that was me. I, I was a bit of a wide-eyed dreamer myself, very close with my own brother. Although, I think back in the day, I was more of the Luigi. And this is a guy, Mario, who's given up on the easy payday to reach out and go after his dreams of starting his own plumbing business. He wants to save Brooklyn through low prices and friendly service. And uh, little does he know he's given an opportunity to do just that. We get to see a lot about Donkey Kong's kingdom. And they just build these carts and they just rock and rock these hot rotted carts all around these uh, suspended highways through the Jungle Kingdom. It's really cool. You get a sense that, uh, I mean, it's, it's serious world building, amazing animated set pieces and um, an opportunity to incorporate, of course, uh, Mario Kart into the, into the film. I loved it. I cried, actually. I literally cried seeing this movie. I was so proud of it. It's fantastic. It's funny. It's got a lot of heart. It touches on all of the nostalgia. It's, uh, you know, beautiful. It's beautifully lit, shot, and animated. And it looks, uh, it just, it, it's a masterpiece. I'm very, very excited about it. It was uh, exciting to get to bring a character that I've kind of been, you know, has been a part of my life, uh, my whole life, essentially, uh, in the form of Donkey Kong. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was cool, you know, uh, I, the character does not have like a ton of like pre kind of, uh, you know, he's not bringing a lot to the table from like uh, the video game. He does not have like a ton of personality, especially in the earlier forms. Um, in later versions, he kind of had adopted some uh, eventually. But uh, yeah, I, I was given a lot of freedom um, to kind of make the character of Donkey Kong my own, which as an actor is all you're looking for. Yeah, Donkey Kong's kind of a showboat, uh, a little petulant, I guess you would say, and trying to impress his father, and uh, kind of uh, that's what drives a lot of his um, desires to entertain and uh, to get attention, which I very much relate to. Donkey Kong's father uh, is not that, you know, I think like a lot of people. Um, yeah, he wants, you know, Donkey Kong just wants to make his father kind of love him and proud, and his father's kind of unimpressed with him, and, and part of his motivation for kind of going on this journey and wanting to do well is to, it's to prove to his father that he's, you know, not just some spoiled uh, rich kid. The age that I was when video games came out, uh, you know, kind of was very conducive to my development as a child and, and to the types of things I wanted to be doing as a child. And so, you know, um, when, when I was young, video games were simple. And as I got older, they got more complex and more interesting, which uh, was a great experience for me because it kind of felt like they were getting better along with my uh, desire for them to be better. Um, but yeah, Nintendo was you know, the system that kind of like ushered me through that entire evolution in a lot of ways. There's like a big rainbow road chase, which is something that I probably have been wanting to see since I was a kid. Um, yeah, it, it does a good job of kind of, I think, capturing the worlds and settings and different levels of the games and uh, actually kind of, in, you know, incorporating them into the story and having them be a part of the action in a way that, uh, yeah, is, is, is fun to, Fun to finally see. She really is the master of her own fate. She grabs the reins, she takes control, she's um, very, very determined and absolutely fearless. She's just head first into battle. I think she's really cool. I aspire to be more like her. Bowser and Princess Peach are um, rather different rulers. Um, Peach is very concerned about the welfare of the citizens of the Mushroom Kingdom. She wants everybody to be taken care of and to live peacefully. Bowser's a little more selfish in his desires. However, being played by the wonderful Jack Black, you still kind of love him. I don't know how that's possible, but you do. Peach is good at getting people together and she's good at setting a plan. Mario brings the heart, probably. He really wants to find Luigi and he kind of galvanizes all of us around that. Then you have Toad, who's just an eternal little ray of sunshine and kind of your 
ultimate hype man and uh, Donkey Kong, he is bringing the laughs. I would say it is fun, epic, colorful, vivid, which is not the same thing. Um, it has a lot of heart. It is very funny and it's just a really fun ride. I was completely blown away seeing the finished film. I went to see it with a range of people of different ages and I loved to see how happy everybody was at the end of it and everyone was having such a good time throughout it. But you're also having those moments of, look at that, I remember that from this game or oh my goodness, they've included this aspect of it. So it's really like a trip down memory lane. That makes me really excited to see it with a bigger audience because the energy of that crowd is just going to be incredible. Aaron and Michael create such a beautiful environment to try new things and they always feel very supportive of you and if you want to try anything a bit like wild or crazy, they really have the door open for that. And we've just really enjoyed kind of getting to catch up along the year because you don't shoot this entirely chronologically or in one go. You kind of pick it up in little moments. So it's always nice getting to get back in the booth with them.